Hello and welcome. Now, we know that we have an energy problem. That's a global problem. What if you could get green and clean energy from burning biomass? Well, that is a reality, and it's shortly to start here at Bueller. Joining us in the studio for a discussion about this is the CEO of Vinca, Stefan Lowers. Thank you very much for joining us, Stefan. Yeah, please, happy to be here. And joining us as well from the Bueller side is our very own CEO of the grains and food business here at Bueller, who's been leading this business since 2014, but previously had his roots and perhaps his heart as well within the energy and infrastructure sectors. Johannes, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. But I need to say I have now my heart also with food. Huh? Absolutely. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, you're the perfect man to come to then to talk about green, clean energy. You obviously buy into it. You're bringing it to Bueller. How difficult is it to get green, clean energy? Oh, it's a very difficult question and we could talk uh, a long period. But I would say, especially in a country like Switzerland, in the winter it's a huge bomb and in the summer it's easy. Oh, so it's a huge problem all year round. No, I mean, the problem is you cannot, or it's very difficult to, to store energy. Uh, and uh, in, the, in the areas where it's cold in the winter, the energy consumption is much bigger in the winter, so you need much more production. Mm. And of course, I mentioned that you're about to start this biomass extraction of energy here, and that's going to be using the expertise of your company, Vinker, Stefan. Um, tell me a little bit about the the problems of, of, of burning biomass to get energy. How do you do it at Vinca? Uh, <clears throat> there's a big dis difference between when you talk about biomass, do you talk about woody biomass, like just wood chips, etc., or do you talk about agro waste? Yeah? And uh, just a woody biomass, everybody can burn, everybody can transform that into energy. The agro waste, uh, on the other hand, is a very difficult one. Yeah? Very specific characteristics. Um, uh, we did gather a lot of experience with different ki kinds of uh, biomass, with different kinds of agro materials, uh, which is now really coming into place here in this project in, in, uh, in Builder in Utsu. Exactly. So you're about to build this uh, test center within uh, Bueller's Utsville site. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. How did this partnership actually come about between Bueller and Vinke? It's not something that we just started. Uh, we have been in agribusiness for many years, of course, Bueller <coughs> as well. And we have met each other many times at customers' places. Customer having a new project, customer doing an upgrade, buying equipment from Bueller, buying an energy plant from Winke. So we knew each other, but we didn't really work together. Yeah? Uh, and that has changed now. So, so since the last two years, we are very, um, going together to the customer, offering combined solutions, uh, finding exactly the needs in manufacturing, in production, but also on the energy side and trying to match that as good as possible. Actually, the start of our today's cooperation was at Networking Days 2019, where, invite, where we invited Vinke to be on stage to speak about this topic. And then we uh, brought it to a new level and, and formalized the cooperation agreement. Well, we're glad to see that this partnership has come this far. Can you please tell us, Johannes, what kind of biomass are we producing in Utsville that is going to fuel this uh, uh, recovery center here? Yeah, I mean, we have uh, uh, different uh, uh, sources. Oh? So one is we are running here a, a training center. So we have a, a mill for training our own employees, the students of the milling schools, but also customers. And all what comes out of these training sessions uh, uh, is available for, for uh, for conversion afterwards. Then we have uh, our R&D facilities, application centers, where we do tests, R&D. But there also our customers are coming and, uh, uh, and bringing their own raw materials and then try to see, their, uh, uh, to see how we convert them in, into the end products they expect, that they can actually uh, do trials for, for their specific needs. And this is, on, let's say, on the traditional uh, milling grains like wheat, corn, barley and so on. But more and more, of course, it's about uh, protein products. Huh? So what we do in uh, uh, meat analogs, uh, milk analogs, so in, uh, uh, in the extrusion applications. And there, uh, actually, it's even more challenging to convert it because these are wet products. Mm. Have you two had a conversation where you've put a figure on how much this project will reduce the uh, footprint, the environmental footprint of, of Bueller, percentage-wise, number-wise, whatever? Can you quantify Yes, it? I can take this question. Uh, Actually, at the first networking days, 2016, our footprint here, and we talk thermal energy. Huh? Uh, the, uh, this is important. Huh? There's the electricity and the thermal energy. So on the electrical energy, we have switched to green uh, power already. 
but we still uh, were using lots of uh, uh, fossil uh, fuel for the thermal energy needs of the of the site. And in, at the first networking day, the consumption was 3,400 uh, uh, equivalent uh, of CO2. And now with this project, we bring it down to 1,300. So it's a 60 percent reduction. That's significant. It is. Yeah. It is indeed. Now, Stefan, to you, what other uh, possibilities are you exploring and uh, what are some examples of ways you can use ash? So <clears throat> what other examples is, is that, or other examples we are, we are talking about, um, John has already talked about a couple of, of uh, sources, possible sources. Of course, we have a much broader experience uh, in different agro sources. And every year there's one, two new uh, sources that, that, that adds to our list. Yeah? So uh, just recently, we had she meal that was also new for me. She meal as a as a waste product from the she nut um, uh, production. Um, we had almond shells that was also recently something we had. So there is always uh, new products we add. So ex expanding our possibilities, our offering uh, for the agro and food markets. Uh, you talked about ash. <coughs> we do not limit uh, our solutions to just turning the, the biomass into into energy. Uh, also, ashes, the ashes that come from that combustion, yeah, contain still a lot of uh, interesting minerals, can be used as fertilizers. So we bring customers in contact with uh, companies uh, working on those fertilizers. Uh, CO2 emission, yeah, even we say uh, biomass combustion is CO2 neutral. Yeah? The CO2 uh, that is emitted is absorbed again by the, by the plants that are growing. Uh, but we want to go further, not just being CO2 neutral. Uh, we also want to be CO2, we want to put CO2 negative uh, solutions in the market by capturing the CO2 out of the uh, flue gases. So out of the stack, we capture it and whether it transform it into other products or can send it, for example, in greenhouses uh, to feed uh, um, the plants in greenhouses. Mm. That's a solution we already have in place, like in the Netherlands, uh, big greenhouses where we capture CO2 and <coughs> put it back in the greenhouse. It's interesting to see yeah. that there are so many possibilities. Uh, Go ahead. Maybe Hans. on this one, on your question about the ash, we also have engaged with, with EMPA, that's the Swiss uh, governmental institute for, for research. We have engaged with them to do, once it's in operation, a study on possible further applications for the ash uh, as a raw material in construction, for instance. Fertilizer was mentioned already, but we will explore together with the experts then different, different uses and what that means for the operation of the combustion system. Wow. So, Johannes, clearly this uh, solution fits well within the context of uh, food processing. You mentioned that the test center is embedded within our own training uh, centers where we run trials uh, on different food inputs with our customers. Can you please speak about what kind of um, potential you see for this across the industry? Right. Uh, uh, very good. First, I would like to, to mention one point which I find truly spectacular for, for the Utsville site. I mentioned at the beginning that we have a big energy topic in the winter, but we are using the biomass as a battery. So we are basically uh, uh, storing all the biomass throughout the year, like in the former times you were collecting wood, and then in the winter we convert it to, to energy. So actually we, we can reduce the, uh, the problem of the energy shortage in the winter with this, uh, with this application. Now if, if, if you look at the world, of course our aim is also to multiply this uh, globally. And uh, uh, there are endless opportunities, but uh, the, the first uh, markets we go after is the applications where there is a, way, uh, a side stream which has little value and a process where there is thermal need. And uh, one good example is, is rice processing. No? When you uh, uh, process rice, you have the husk of the rice, which is uh, containing a lot of silica, which is, has no uh, nutritional value, so it's, it's a waste. And uh, uh, at the same time, the rice processing needs steam. So that's the perfect application uh, for such a system that actually in the plant integrated, we convert the rice husk into, into energy needed for the, for the process. And uh, uh, we have estimated that around the world, there are more than 300 rice mills uh, in operation where uh, such a system is not yet uh, installed. And we also see around about uh, at, at least 10 additional plants built every year where we can apply this. So we see Huge, huge opportunities. Rice is the obvious one, but there are many more. Cocoa, uh, uh, malting, uh, oat is another good example. So there, there, there are endless applications. May, <coughs> may I add? Because yes. this is exactly what Johannes is, is describing, the business model of Finke for already more of 100 years. Yeah? Turning waste from an industrial process into energy that feeds that process. 
So a local solution that solves a waste problem and solves an energy uh, uh, problem. And it avoids transporting waste, it, it, it avoids building a distribution grid for uh, power or gas, etc. It's finding local solutions for local problems. Uh, and, and that has been the strength throughout the years. And most of the times these are solutions or projects that even do not need subs to be subsidized or, or have other support. It's, it's so logic to do it. Uh, and the food and agro industry is a typical industry, but there's a big potential for uh, implementing such solutions. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe, so, so, sorry, go on. Maybe another example would be that, uh, I mean, many of these byproducts do have some nutritional value, like the brain on, on wheat uh, processing. But quite often the, the use of this brain is somewhere else in the world. So quite often we see actually that these, these byproducts are shipped around the world. China and other places where there is uh, an excess demand. But that's the question, is that really sustainable to, uh, to transport a byproduct from somewhere in Africa to China uh, to feed a pig? And an option, of course, would be to create locally the energy needed to process the plant and avoid entirely the transportation. But of course, you at Bueller, you've got the willingness, but not the technology. You've got the technology, but you need a customer. Uh, in this case, it's a partnership. If we're going to get more clean, uh, green, clean energy, is this the way forward? Do you both think? A quick comment for both of you. Partnerships, the way forward? Yeah, definitely. Bringing so much customers and potential solutions together is the part, <coughs> is the part forward. Yeah? We live today in a, in a, in a society where, where you alone cannot do anything anymore. So you have to work together. You have to, uh, and it does not just bring solutions to the customers. It brings better solutions to the customers because together you better understand the customer's need and also you, you, you build something that fits together. Um, and that's uh, the big potential of this, this cooperation. Yeah. Mm, and you believe that too? Yeah, yeah absolutely. There's not much to add to this. Maybe just uh, the aspect of speed. Huh? Uh, I mean, we are living in, in the VUCA world and the challenges we are all seeing are so, so big that we have to address them fast. And that's only possible with massive collaboration. Yeah. Well, thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Johannes, for joining us. The facility is just getting underway here at uh, Bueller and should come on stream in 2023. We'll be keeping an eye on it. I'm sure you will too. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.